Welcome to Finchley College. Today I'm going to speak to you about um, coordinate system. Um, there are two types of coordinates. There's one I call rectangular system and there's one polar system. The rectangular system is very nice and simple one. You've got two lines at 90 degrees to each other. So all of these angles are 90 degrees. The intersection is called origin, and the origin has a coordinate of east ink 0, north ink 0, height 0. If you're standing in the origin, if you move to the right, your east ink increases, you get plus east, you go from 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meter, 4 meter, all the way to infinity. If you move to the left, your east ink decreases from 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way to 0 and back to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, to minus infinity. If you move forward, your north ink increases, you get plus north, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, all the way to infinity. And if you move backwards, your north ink reduces until it gets back to 0 again, and then you go to negative territory, all the way to minus infinity. So this rectangular coordinate system is two lines at right angle to each other on the floor. They're on a plane on the floor. You could be standing as if you're standing in here. The two lines on the floor and you can walk forward or backward to the right or to the left. So if you have a point here, for example, point P1, the east, if you draw a right angle line to the easting axis, the easting is a dimension from origin to this point, and at this point the easting is 7.5 plus 7.5 meters and the northing if I draw a right angle to the north axis the northing is 10 meters. The easting and northing we usually write the easting first so this is the easting and that's the northing and the height you can write the height for example 2 meters z as the height. Uh, you could write it in a vertical format or you could write it like this p1 horizontal format easting Northing z height, say for example 7.5, 10, and 2. If you have a point in here it's called P2, the easting for example is 11 and the northing is minus 5. A point in this quadrant, P3, the easting is minus 13 and the northing is minus 8. A point in this quadrant, easting minus 7, northing is say 13. So P4 minus 7 and 13. We divide this to four quadrants. This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. You could be if you are in a point in this quadrant, your easting will be plus and your northing will be plus. If you are in this quadrant, your easting is plus and your northing will be minus. If you happen to be in this quadrant, your easting will be minus and your northing will be minus, minus 13, minus 8. If you are in quadrant 4, your easting is minus 7 and your northing is plus 13, minus and plus. If a point happens to be on the east axis, is easting will be different, but its northing will be zero because intersection origin has got the easting zero, northing zero, height zero. So any point in here, for example here, easting is nine, northing is zero. Any point in here, easting is five, northing is zero. Point in here, easting is minus six, northing is zero. Any point on the east axis has got a northing of zero. Similarly, any point on the north axis here east things would be 0, so east thing is 0, north thing is 12, east is 0, north thing is 8, east is 0, north is minus 6. So any point on the north axis vertical line I will have um, similar east thing, but uh, north thing will be different, in this case east thing will be 0. On the, north, on the east axis itself, the north thing will be 0. So this is a simple way to uh, identify where you are on site. You will always have 
an imaginary or real life intersection line um, access and you will work out your position in relation to this um, uh, origin. You can identify points on site using the polar system. In the polar system, uh, we, we draw a line from one point to another point, for example, point A to point B. And if we calculate the angle between the north axis and this line, we call this one whole circle bearing. Say if whole circle bearing, say 40 degrees, and if we know the distance from A to B, for example, say 6 meters, we can calculate position of B. Position of B, all we do is we turn the instrument to this angle and we measure, say, 6 meters, and that's point B. Uh, the whole circle bearing is always measured from the north, so if your point happens to be here, for example, point C, your whole circle bearing is measured from the north to the line, and if you know that distance, for example, say 8 meters, then we can mark C. If your point happens to be in this quadrant, your whole circle bearing again will be start from the north to the line, and in this case, the whole circle bearing will be that angle. Now the angles, the north is set to north as 0 degrees, because these are 90 degrees. East will be 90 degrees, minus north will be 180 degrees, minus east 270 degrees, and 0 back to 360 degrees. So your whole circle bearing starts from 0 uh, all the way to 90 and then 180, 270, 360. Therefore the whole circle bearing is between 0 to 360 degrees. It cannot be negative and it cannot be more than 360 degrees. It's like a 24 hour clock that you can go once you get to 24 hours you go back to 1 and 2. If at any time for any reason your whole circle bearing happens to be a negative number you will need to add 360 to make it positive. Or if for any reason it happens to be more than 360, you should take 360 off. So that is the, the, the rectangular and the polar system are uh, the two ways that we identify positions on site. Uh, but uh, we don't use one or the other, we use both at the same time simultaneously. So what, when you're doing setting out, when you want to set out a point, what you do, you will tell the total station, I want to set out a point P1 with these values, 7.5 meters and in northern 10 meters. The instrument, for example, is set up here. Say some, the instrument is set up here, for example, and you're back in the same system here. Right? So the instrument is here, and you're trying to set out this point P1. So you tell the instrument is coordinate, you say the coordinate of P1 is 7.5 and is 10 meters. The instrument knows its position, for example, easting is 15 and northing say is, uh, uh, for example, 7. So the instrument immediately calculates, that's my north, it will calculate the bearing to turn from the north to that point and it will calculate you the distance and what it will give you, it will tell you the bearing and the distance from here to there. So you give the information to the total station in a rectangular system. You say, I want to set out the point with these values. And it responds back to you, says, to set that point out from here, you will need to turn the instrument through this bearing and you need to measure that distance. So that is setting out. But when you do a surveying, you do the opposite. In the survey, you start to a point, for example, you start to a point in here, you've set up here, you start to this point. As you start to the point, the instrument can, can see the whole circle bearing, it can measure it, it will be displayed on the screen. And you press distance, the instrument measures the distance, and it will convert it back and it will show you the coordinate. It will show you, for example, that point has these values. So, you're surveying, you're sighting to a point that you can see but you don't know its coordinate and the instrument responds back and it will display its coordinate for you. So always simultaneously you're using the two systems at the same time depending whether you're doing setting out or surveying. Now I haven't talked about heights, I've shown everything in easting and northing only. 
So this it was a plane, and it's assuming that one is zero, so the origin had east thing zero, north thing zero, and height zero. So we assume that we are on a plane, on the floor, or axis is on the floor, this is your plus north, you're standing here, this is your plus north, this is your minus north, on to the right this is your plus east, on to your left is minus east. So this is your plane, if a point happens to be here, for example you have a point in here, that point will have a different height, and as you slide to it, the instrument will show you as easting, is northing, and its height. So for the moment, we've shown everything on a plane, as if everything is on the on one plane, zero plane. So I haven't shown you the height. But in reality, when you do surveying or uh, setting up, you'll also be taking uh, account of the height as well, and uh, the instrument will show you the height. Uh, so in the next lecture, I will talk to you about uh, height measurements, leveling, and how the instrument measures heights, and how you can set the instrument height uh, itself.